find out more from Dr. Yukteswar Kumar, Senior in Politics, Languages and International Studies at the University of Bath. Good morning. Now, how familiar does this sound to you, the concerns of, of Martin and Tom that they raise? Good morning. Uh, yes, there is huge erosion of trust in British politics. And I can uh, hear the voice of Martin and other uh, residents in our country. And I believe it is a multifaceted issue. Uh, I would say it is driven by several factors, including, in my opinion, it is political mistakes, the recent economic challenges, the social challenges, the institutional weakness, role of mainstream media, and role of social media as well. As uh, in the last few years, I mean, last, let's say, 20 years or so, what has happened is uh, that there has been uh, a bit of scandals, not like in India or China or Brazil, but uh, the expense scandal I uh, remember in uh, about 10, 15 years ago, and then lobbying scandal, if you may remember. And then there is an issue of what we call uh, not compulsory voting in our country. Uh, for example, in Australia, uh, if you don't go to vote, there'll be penalty of 20 Australian dollars. Mm. Belgium, 40 to 80 uh, euros. Even Brazil, uh, they have a small fine. Uh, and these fines, they increase. I mean, there are a few countries, uh, Argentina, Peru, mostly Latin American countries, but even European countries like Luxembourg or Asian countries like Singapore, they also have these kind of compulsory voting systems. In, Lux in Luxembourg, uh, if you don't go to vote, uh, then uh, it, the fine could be $100. Now, what I mean, I'm not asking for a compulsory voting here in the UK, but as you rightly said, and, and the uh, many uh, residents and listeners uh, have said that there is uh, quite a lot of mistrust in politicians and people think that uh, politicians are not uh, listening to them. They are there on their doorsteps when the election comes, mm -hmm. but their or daily life standard has not really improved. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So these are the are the regions uh, of what I also call as partisan polarization. Um, kind, kind, kind of a lot of major political parties. Uh, they. Uh, there is quite a lot of polarization by the right, right wing and by the late left wing. And these polarization being exacerbated by media coverage and I, I clear said social media. And uh, these can amplify into extreme viewpoints mm. and then uh, undermine the moderate uh, local voices. Well, yes. people tend to, we, we're sort of finding on social media that some people get vilified for, for opinions that aren't even particularly, not even extreme and may even be mainstream. And yet there are then factions that will demonise those. But I mean, it was interesting talking about other countries where they do have compulsory voting. Uh, how do we compare to other countries in terms of how much we trust our politicians? Is it particularly bad here? Is it this the same across the world that no one, because even if you have to vote, even if there is compulsory voting, doesn't mean to say that you trust the people that you're voting for. You just have to vote for someone. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, you're completely right over there. But yes, as far as trust in politician globally, if we compare, uh, it's the same phenomenon. I was uh, in India uh, yesterday, in fact, and Egypt before that um, for some time. And then uh, two months ago, I was in China and then Vietnam and then Malaysia. Uh, and and I, I go and talk to people. I love talking to people. Obviously, uh, countries like China and North Korea, uh, we can't compare because there is no election there and whatever the politicians say. Uh, but surprisingly, people in China who uh, 
do not have right to even elect their own leaders at local level or at higher level, uh, they have perhaps a bit better trust in their uh, government and Xi Jinping. Uh, you will be surprised in autocrat states because their mind, the young people, they are to told from the very beginning that uh, everything, what is happening to you good is because of the uh, good government mm -hmm. and obviously china uh, in last 40 years has developed at least a six time more rapidly than other countries which is india because i always compare india and china uh, india being a democratic country we had uh, elections in india recently um, now trust in other countries politicians uh, for example in egypt or, or any, def, or as I said, Vietnam or, or Malaysia. Uh, I don't think it is quite a lot. Of course, uh, it is all related to economy and daily life. If your daily, if your life is standard of a family uh, of, or a person is, is very, very good uh, and is improving, is increasing your salary, uh, your needs, everything is, 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 is better compared to, let's say, previous 10, 15 years, then you will have more trust in the government. And uh, that is what has not happened in our country because NHS, uh, people were talking. 86% of people here in our country, they are dissatisfied with uh, the government NHS uh, and NHS. Uh, and then uh, the trains, the buses, the, the, the mortgage, for example, has gone up for most of the, the residents. Uh, uh, then um, the inflation uh, has has not done good for the country and for, for the people. Yeah. So, what is happening is obviously uh, if your life is not improving, then you blame others. And then uh, people think, oh, these politicians, they just come on the doorsteps during the election time while they have such a good life uh, and we do not have. And, and then it reduces uh, the confidence the scandals that they have. And corruption, they don't have. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you ever so much for your time this morning. Dr. Yukteswar Kumar from the University of Bath.